Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Benjamin Cole! <laughs> Wow, that was a really uh, high energy uh, setting right there. All the way up here. Thank you, Captain Joe. Uh, so, you know, just to kind of get started, right, um, I'm going to kind of go give you a little bit about myself. I'm Benjamin Coles. Uh, I have my former manager over here and a couple of uh, people over here at Apple. They're cheering me on. Um, you know, and I want to just tell you a little bit of humble beginnings. I started off as an SRE over at Apple. I transformed over to DevOps. I've done engineering. I've done a business analyst, and then I made my way into engineering leadership. Uh, so, take it forward, you know, as a senior software dev leader, but I also like to say that FinOps leader. Uh, I'm also on the governing board and always fielding questions. So if you guys wanna come by, stem, uh, step by and say hi. So I don't really have much of an agenda. It's gonna be the, the introduction of our journey and the challenges we faced and the solve for those challenges. So, you know, like you've seen these FinOps domains, right? And in these domains we have, we started off with understanding cloud cost usage. You know, you start taking a look at like uh, Cur, and you say, all right, you know, what, what are the interesting details we can gather from this? Uh, once you kind of understand what your usage patterns are, Right, then you start saying, okay, how do we measure that? And that's where performance tracking and benchmarking really become important. Jumping to that, it's real-time decision-making. Right? So now you have an idea of what's there, you have some performance, but then you know, what is real-time? Is it a day? Is it a week? Is it a month? And so we started off with you know, like a month and try to squeeze that down to weekly, including daily. Cloud rate optimization is pretty straightforward. I'm not gonna go too much into that. Cloud uses optimization. How do we kind of optimize those instances? And then, you know, like we've kind of been kind of focusing on forecasting this year. So we're gonna jump into the challenges, and the first thing I'm gonna do is bring up the FinOps survey from this year. There's a lot of people that came and answered and they gave uh, details, but you know, like the, the top ones were empowering engineers to take action and gathering unit economics and so forth. The boxes that are listed green here are the areas that we've been able to impact. Now the bottles that are, uh, the, the bars that are gray, there's still problems, right? But I'm just focusing on the green ones today. So, when you first start about, uh, start into a FinOps practice, right, you're kind of like gathering documents. You might go to the website for uh, public cloud. You say, hey, I would like to understand what I'm looking at. Once you kind of have a little bit of understanding of what you're doing, you read an FAQ page, a how-to doc, then you need to kind of say, okay, now I'm gonna go into our account and start doing the dirty work. After that, you kind of have a process. You can do this repeatable. It could be every week, every month, and you want to change that into an automated process, and that's where tooling comes in. So the challenge is at scale. You have your team that's also trying to do that, but then you have every other team trying to solve the same thing, but in their own kind of way, right? Maybe they're not doing it on a FinOps slant, maybe they're doing it because they want to reduce usage uh, for their uh, Kubernetes clusters. But you have these competing priorities where everybody wants to participate, but they're just not sure how. So how do we kind of solve it? Our way was a little bit unique, but we decided to keep it high level. Now, what I mean by high level is that when you think about, you know, like the reports that you give out to people, right? Everybody says, hey, you know, for the engineering side, they're like, this is not important to us. Work with us with something important. So that might be their EC2 uh, or GCP uh, compute usage. So what we decided to do was focus on aggregate forecast. How do we roll all this data up from these different departments into one central place? Because if we had that, then we can make decisions at that high level. The teams were initially like, very positive, they said, oh, we'll get you the data. But then they, when you start thinking about the number of accounts and how things are grouped together, 
it became very difficult for them. So they asked us, hey, we need help with this. And that's where crowdsourcing and partnering become a really big thing. Like we need to get the data, we can go to the engineer specifically, whoever owns the account, but at the same time, if we go to that, that person, then the person in the middle who's also doing it for their group doesn't learn anything. So it's very important for us to rely and depend and partner with these people. Didn't solve everything. So we asked them, give us a forecast in Excel. We all know and love that. But what we were seeing that people were getting very you know, tense about like, hey, why is the data not matching? Well, what we saw was that whatever they forecasted in a dollar amount, right, was still off by the usage that they had anticipated. So they had saw their usage go up, right, but they couldn't art articulate it in dollars. And so we would say, hey, you can get something up to 40% off of what the usage was to what the forecast is. And that's where process and tooling come in. So we decided to give the teams monthly reports to show them, you know, hey, these are what the accounts are, are uh, exhibiting. And then what we need you to do is trend up or down. And that's really important because now the teams can come back and look at their last month's usage and say, hey, we think our environment's go growing or it's decreasing. It worked, but then people were really upset because whatever formulas were in Excel spreadsheets and you're aggregating it from 30 different reports and there was errors. So we came up with a couple of different methodologies here. We aggregate all the account mapping, so we know who the owners are and which private cloud, public cloud they're using. Now this is really good because now we can understand like their last, uh, by account, account level, right? We can understand what their spend was last month, last year, and so forth. But what happens when you have many, many accounts? Well, you're gonna have some for dev and you're gonna have some for prod, but people are gonna logically wanna split those up into groups. Maybe dev didn't have any, any growth, but prod definitely did. So what we do is we put, this, we put them into hierarchies. And this is a very uh, common, uh, what is it? So in GCP, they have GCP folders, right? And this is great because if you have all the accounts, you can map them in a certain way, put a forecast on it, but it doesn't work well if you have multiple public clouds. So what happened after that? So instead of aggregating, you know, or telling people, hey, for every single line account that you have, I want you to give me a forecast. We said, instead, forecast at the hierarchy level. So they could just forecast at dev and test, and they could have a different line for production. This was met with a, a lot of good feedback. Teams were able to articulate back to us what they needed. They could say up or down what their, what their expected spend was going to be, and teams got to do this in a self-service way. We also allow some ability, this is a homegrown tool, we allow ability to copy paste into the tool. Now you'd think it'd be done, but no, <laughs> right? Um, by having this ability, it gave us some additional reporting. Can't go into specifics, but I can tell you at a very high level that this forecasting really encompasses all the domains that we were talking about before. It helps, it enables, it provides the future of what the environment should be. So we had three separate reports, and I'll go into them. The first one, weekly aggregates spend by service and by hierarchy. So if you think about, okay, on a week-to-week -week average, do I know what my third-party account or a public cloud account is exhibiting? Okay, now I need to go into a different interface, I have to use a different tool, and I have to go use a different Excel spreadsheet, all to see about all in one place. So what we did, we brought all that in, and then we took them by service. So if you have compute, or you have object store, we can present that in a way that makes sense. Then we gave it on a week-to-week -week view. So we can see percentages increase or decrease to see how well they're doing. Now, why do we go to weekly? Well, you think about, you know, that the times right now, the economy is not doing as well as it could be doing, right? People want to see more data. We want to see if the changes that we're making at the top level are impacting the people down below who are doing the real work, doing the heavy lifting. So, upper management wants to see, hey, how are we doing? Are we trending up and trending down? 
Then it kind of goes into the next report, which is year over year aggregate spend by hierarchy, by forecast, by version. So the hierarchy, again, a set of accounts. That could be your dev, your non-prod, or it could be your production. But then there's also the forecast. What did you anticipate that you were going to spend? And then by a version. Now, why is the version important? There's like weekly, there's monthly forecast meetings and people try to, to make commentary about whether a service is gonna grow or decrease. So when those decisions are made, you need to kind of lock them in a forecast. When you lock them in a forecast, then you can need to understand what the trend of the forecast changed over time. So you can go back to a version and say, hey, we were planning on new product, that product's no longer there, we can see the forecast trend downwards. Now, this last one's kind of touchy, right? Most of the times when I'm working with engineers, engineers are always, you know, they want to help, right? But I get feedback when I'm like, hey, this instance type needs to be reduced. It needs to be resized. And I keep wondering why do they push back? There's some nervousness around why they push back. So instead, we have monthly aggregate utilization by hierarchy. So if you think about the P95 data that you get for CPU, if you say, hey, the P95 for 95% of the time for all the CPU aggregated all, to, all together is at 20%. That seems low, but if we increase it by 25%, is that a good number? Or 30%, is that a better number? Well, who's gonna help make that decision? Well, I like to say that for the engineering team, they actually met that with a, a warm kind of feeling. They said, you know what, this actually seems like a problem we can solve. We don't need to go from the media services group and scale down these massive clusters, but instead we can aim for a target. And we took that same message back to the executives and they say, hey, shouldn't this number be higher? Shouldn't this number be 25 or 30? So now we actually have three separate groups all talking a common language and comfortable with each other to be able to talk about the CPU aggregate level. So from a finance pers perspective, I'm over in finance, I'm an engineer in finance, don't ask. Um, we can say things like increase CPU aggregate. And as I was saying earlier, we can go to the engineer, right? And the engineer says, yes, you know, this does seem fair. And then we can go to the executive and ask them the same bit of information. So the engineers in turn, right, are getting messages not only from finance to, to increase CPU aggregate, but they're also hearing from their executives to increase the CPU aggregate as well. So let's see. I had some time for Q&A, but I have a hearing issue, right? So what I'm gonna suggest is that uh, we can meet off stage right afterwards if anybody has any questions. All right. You wanna go to the next, oh. I did right, right, right. Give a round of applause. I'll also be available at 6 p.m. tonight, right, at the, uh, the ship. So please stop by and say hi there too. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Ben from Apple. Incredibly friendly guy on the governing board. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks for watching that session. I'm sitting here in San Diego right after FinOpsX. We hope you join us next year here live 2024. In the meantime, please subscribe to the channel and join the community. Get involved. Join the summits. Get in a working group. And don't forget to get FinOps certified. It's next year here in San Diego for FinOpsX. It's going to be twice as big. Come join the party. Come meet your people. Welcome home.